Hi, I'm Dr. Anne Marie. On today's episode of Your Life, we're transforming our 1970s master bath into a sustainable, healthy spa. And later, prostate cancer. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in American men. So why is this man choosing to wait before undergoing treatment? That's coming up next on Your Life Redefined. Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Your Life. You know, over the past several months, my Greenovation team and I have been transforming a 1970s energy draining horse farm here in Central Florida into an energy efficient and sustainable property. Our mission this season is to prove that green living is synonymous with healthy living when it comes to the planet, the health of your home, and ultimately the health of you and your family. This week on our Eco Healthy Home segment, our design team tackles our master bathroom. Welcome to the bathroom. Master bath, it's a little bit grayish. Our Greenovation Project's master bath is something right out of the 70s, from the outdated wallpaper to the Miami yellow ceramic tiles. Award-winning kitchen and bath designer Rick Hacovello is helping us bring this bathroom space into the 21st century. When that house was built, those bathrooms were probably state-of-the-art. They were what they were at the time. Just like with our sustainable and healthy kitchen space, we're giving Rick the challenge to incorporate renewable and recycled products into our master bath. We also want to make sure the products are free of any off-gassing or VOCs. When you came to me, it was very clear what your goals were, and that was you wanted eco-friendly, green, sustainable, and there's not a manufacturer in the industry that is all of those things as much as Holiday Kitchens. Holiday Kitchens offers so much. There's such a variety of offerings through that company. A lot of companies, when it comes to their eco-friendly product, they have a limited availability of what you can do, what you can design with. But Holiday Kitchens, uh, the sky's the limit. You're going to have a much bigger tub, definitely a soaking tub. This is going to be your oasis. Taking out this closet is going to give our design team the needed space for a jacuzzi tub. When it comes to creating a spa-like shower space, we're getting rid of this old storage area. To prep these areas for our recycled glass and ceramic tiles, we're using the latest lightweight foam board material. It might be orange in color, but it's definitely a green product. It's been requested by the, uh, at least the tile industry for quite some time to have a waterproof panel. Uh, Schluter's come out with a lightweight building panel that's not only waterproof, it's vapor tight. Uh, it's going to be adding R value and taking out the weight, uh, probably the lightest panel that we know of on the market right now. Uh, this is going to definitely add to the speed of the installation and helping ensure that we have a healthy shower, again, uh, minimizing water intrusion by keeping it watertight and vapor tight. I know it wasn't the biggest bathroom, but we're going to be maximizing the space, right? Absolutely. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. And that's the coconut palm. That is absolutely gorgeous. This is coconut palm, the, the two sink cabinets uh, will have stainless steel doors, okay? Yeah. This room is special. I love this bathroom. This is, this is special. We're going to build medicine chests for you mm. uh, instead of the old style in the wall medicine right. chests. We're going to keep that out because of the aesthetic value. This will be a, a, another floating shelf. How are the you going to that though? The mirror will go floor to ceiling. Wow. Okay? And the hardware that I have for you that's going to go uh, to the ceiling right here is just outstanding. The other outstanding element to our eco-healthy bath is being illuminated with the latest LED technologies. This is the LED swivel from American Lighting. It only uses one and a quarter watts. So with American Lighting, we did most of the accent lighting throughout the house. The bullets, the swivels, the under cabinet lighting in the media room, the floating cabinet lighting in the, in the bathroom. Uh, such a diverse company. We're going to put LED lights above each sink. They will be centered. And then... What do you what, think of our sinks? What I'd like to see... Vitrasso uh, in the master bath, right? Yep. Okay. What I'd like to see is countertop 
sinks. Kohler makes an outstanding glass countertop sink that would be amazing. And then what we do is we're going to take your faucets and have them come directly out of the mirror. Oh, wow. Very nice. Very, very spa-like. So, okay. It's going to be amazing. And check this out. In addition to the latest water-efficient plumbing features, we're saving water and saving towels with this energy-saving body drying system. Take a particular look at the bathroom area. You've seen there's not been a lot of innovation in around the bath area for a number of years. So when you go to places where you see people with special needs needing to dry off or people in a fitness center that's trying to dry off because they don't want a towel or can't use a towel, we thought, you know, that seems to be a product that makes sense. Let's develop a body dryer for the home and the commercial setting to where you've got a product that as you get wet, you get showered, you can get out, you can dry off without a towel. So now if you've got an elderly person or someone that has skin irritations that doesn't need a towel or someone just has a luxury you know, bathroom that wants a product in their bath to dry off, now you've got a product that fits that need. Spacious, spa-like, and sustainable. Our design team created a healthy contemporary master bath in a down-home country setting. A lot of houses are broken up with style. Your house, is, the style is going to, no matter where your guests go, they're going to get the right feel of the room they've been in to the room they go into. 50 years from now, or 30 years from now, people will look at what you have and say, hopefully they'll say, wow, that's awesome. Okay, one last time, let's bring up that before picture of our master bathroom. And here's the after. What an amazing transformation. Great job, team. For more information about your life redefined, log on to our website at rl.tv. Coming up next on Your Life Redefined, in the era of PSA screening, we know that about 60% of men don't actually need to be treated for prostate cancer. Active surveillance is a recently developed strategy of close monitoring. New research and a new choice for some men to consider when it comes to treating prostate cancer. And later, a retired scientist finally realizes his lifelong dream to work with horses. Stay tuned, your life redefined. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Your Life, I'm Dr. Anna Marie. You know, every year in our country, almost a thousand men are diagnosed with prostate cancer, and in almost all cases are treated with either surgery or radiation treatment, which are associated with side effects and, in many cases, a poor quality of life. Well, as you'll see on this week's Your Life Story, Steve Pyenson shares with us how he decided to take on this disease. I actually thought that if I had surgery, my quality of life could get worse. Three years ago, Stephen Pyenson was shocked when he found out that he had prostate cancer. Hi. Nice to see you. Same here. Come in, have a seat. Okay. It was his shock and fears from the debilitating side effects of surgery or radiation that motivated Stephen to have a long talk with his family and doctors. Since he was dealing with a localized, low-risk form of prostate cancer, Stephen made the choice to follow a plan of active surveillance. The hardest part is mentally. And if you can get by that, that you have a little cancer and it's low grade and uh, you're know, checking it every three months, that's a great thing. In the era of PSA screening, we know that about 60% of men don't actually need to be treated for prostate cancer. Active surveillance is a recently developed strategy of close monitoring. They aren't treated initially, so they get serial blood tests with a PSA, physical exams and biopsies. If it looks like the disease is behaving more aggressively, they're taken to treatment at that point. Dr. Julia Hayes and her team at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute created a computerized model of 100,000 hypothetical 65-year-old men newly diagnosed as having localized low-risk prostate cancer. They either receive treatment or a strategy of active surveillance. Men who pursued active surveillance had a better quality of life overall, on average, than men who were treated initially. The hope is that this approach allows us to follow them and not treat them potentially forever. Um, and 
yet capture men who have more aggressive disease. I consider myself very lucky that I have this option to wait it out. What this study provides is a starting off point for an important discussion between physicians and patients. As for Stephen, he's just happy he took the time to talk with his doctors. He's now enjoying his freedom years of retirement. My quality of life is great. I mean, I recently retired. I uh, joined a gym. Um, I watch my diet. I get a tremendous amount of exercise. Um, I do things that I've never done before as far as um, leisure time, which I never had in my life. Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American men. That's why it's really important to get an early diagnosis, so talk to your doctor. The American Cancer Society recommends that all men start getting screened by age 50 by using a blood test. Screening should take place at age 40 for men at even higher risk or men with close relatives who had prostate cancer at an early age. Men who have a PSA of less than 2.5 may only need to be retested every two years. If your PSA level is higher than 2.5, you should be tested every year. Men with a PSA level in the borderline range between 4 and 10 have about a 1 in 4 chance of having prostate cancer. If the PSA is more than 10, the chance of having prostate cancer is over 50%. For more information about your life redefined, log on to our website at rl.tv. Coming up next on Your Life Redefined, we're in the kitchen with Chef Ulrich, and today, fresh mussels are on the menu. Stay away from the canned mussels. When you eat fresh mussels, there's no substitute for those. Stay tuned, Your Life will be right back. It's now time for today's trivia question. How many servings of fish do you need to eat each week to lower your risk for heart worries? The answer when we come back. Did you figure out today's trivia question? Well, the answer is B. Eating fatty fish like salmon or mackerel just twice a week can lower your risk of heart disease. One of my favorite things to order in a restaurant are mussels, but I must admit I feel kind of intimidated when I go to shop for them or make them at home. On this week's Eat Well Livo recipe, I understand Chef Ulrich has some great shopping tips, but also a simple and savory mussel recipe. Let's check it out. Today we're going to be cooking with mussels. Um, mussels can sometimes be a little intimidating to the person out there. You know, you walk around the supermarket, you'll see the ones in cans and maybe gravitate towards those. But I tell you what, stay away from the canned mussels. When you eat fresh mussels, there's no substitute for those. Now there's a, there's a little bit of an old wives tale when it comes to mussels and that is that if mussels are open, discard them, throw them away because they're dead. Now that's not always the case because what mussels do is they'll go to sleep and they'll open up a little bit like this. So what you need to do is just wake the guy up in there, just a little tap on the board there. And that muscle, see if the camera can get that, starts to close up. That means the muscle is still alive in here. And we want live muscles, we don't want dead muscles. So once you finish cooking them, any muscles that haven't opened up, discard those. But any muscles that are open before you cook them, give them a little tap. If they close up, they're good to use. Go through the muscles carefully though and take away any muscles that have cracked um, and the shells have been broken because that'll happen sometimes during harvesting and uh, those muscles, chances are, are dead inside. So go through very carefully. Pick off the beard as well. The beard are the little fine hairs that you find on the muscles. Pick those off. We'll start out with a nice hot pan. We'll turn it on over here. A little bit of olive oil into a pan. We'll take some garlic. And again, you can adjust the recipe to how much garlic you like. We're gonna put some nice, good amounts of garlic in there. We've got some shallots as well. Pop the shallots into the pan. And this is really gonna form the base of the mussel dish. These are the aromats that are gonna add more flavor to your mussel. Just gently in the pan, saute those. And you just wanna to start to get these nice and soft and translucent. Turn the heat up nice and high. Get the pan really nice and warm. And then take the mussels and put them into the pan. Don't overcrowd the pan. The more mussels you put into the pan at this point now, the more heat you're gonna lose. And the heat is very important for us because at this point now, we're gonna take some of our capers, put them in the pan. 
There we go. And some white wine. The white wine is going to steam open the mussels. I'll put that in. And then put a lid on top of that. You want to try and cook the shellfish as quickly as possible and be careful not to overcook it. So that's probably been about 20 or 30 seconds. We'll open up the pan here and see what they're doing. These are nice fresh mussels so they will open up pretty quickly. Keep them moving. And the camera can see already here that some of these mussels have opened up almost instantly. That's a good sign. That means these mussels are nice and fresh. We're going to close them up for just a little while longer here. Two, three minutes is probably about as long as you want to cook them. Sometimes you'll go up to about five minutes, no longer than that. Don't overcook these guys. We'll open up the pan again. Just again, give this a little stir. Now this is the part of the recipe that's optional for you. You can either cook with a little bit of cream or you can maybe even cook with some Greek yogurt if you don't want cream. Or optional, leave it out completely. If you don't want to have that fat in your diet, leave it out. But if you've got room for a little bit, just a couple of spoons full of cream. Get the heat up nice and high. Let all these juices combine together and give them about another minute to open up. I'm going to take some parsley, chop the parsley. Into the mussels like that. Again, give them a stir. Allow all those flavors to marry in the pan. And at this point now we can turn off the heat on here and we can start the plate up process. Grab a nice big bowl, a deep bowl, because we've got lots of liquid in here and we like that liquid. You can mop it up with bread or you can put it over pasta, over rice if you like. And then go through picking out the individual mussels that have opened up. Again, with mussels, be careful. Make sure you get them from a reputable source. Uh, these guys filter the water in the oceans and each one of these guys will filter approximately uh, 18 gallons of water a day. And what they're doing is they're taking all the, the bad elements out of the water and of course that goes through their body and that means that they are pretty susceptible to uh, picking up some diseases in them. So make sure that you get good mussels from a good reputable source. We're going to pour some of that liquid right over the top of those. Make sure that we get some of the garlic, the capers and the shallots over the top of that. Finish that with some parsley right over the top. So there you have it, a lovely bowl of steaming hot Atlantic mussels with some capers, some garlic, some shallots, and of course the optional cream in there. Enjoy. Looks awesome, Chef, thanks. You can find this healthy recipe and more from Chef Ulrich on our website at rl.tv. Coming up next on Your Life Redefined, how a retired scientist is carving out a second career with horses. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Horses stole my heart when I was a little girl. Matter of fact, check out this picture, my first pony ride when I was five years old. As I've matured, I found my passion for horses turned out to be a great release and a great way to bring balance into my life. As you'll see on this week's tail end feature, how horses carved out a new career for a former chemist. For most people, a career choice is permanent and defining. But for Jan Huffman, his former job as a scientist was just a prelude to his lifelong dream of becoming a horse trainer. An active rider keeps the horse from the moment of the get-go, saying, I am in control with you. Jan worked most of his life in the lab with renowned pharmaceutical companies and corporations. Well, my other life, I, my college I work uh, with the, my BS degree and my graduate work was in chemistry and I went to work for Baxter Intravenous as a chief chemist and I was with him for two years. Uh, after two years, I moved on to Wyeth Pharmaceutical in sales. Always interested and fascinated by these beautiful creatures, Jan decided to take the option of early retirement and set his sights on a new passion in life. The part of my retirement package was they, they, they one of the packages was uh, they paid me literally to learn a new occupation. So I took that money and went into horse training. 
Jen traveled to Colorado to learn from natural horseman John Lyons. There he was first taught the basics of dealing with horses and later the subtle details that give one the power to control and connect with such a spirited animal. We as humans, we think that horses should do what we want them to do without telling them what to do or coaching them what to do. So when I first began training with John Lyons, uh, he would give us an exercise to do. I would say, oh, I can do that. Well, I would get on my horse and guess what? He didn't do it. He didn't do it. And I kept trying harder and harder and he wouldn't do it. It's because I didn't, number one, understand the lesson. And number two, he wasn't trusting me. Uh, I didn't have patience with the horse. I didn't have respect for the horse. And once after a, a few weeks out there, I began realizing that I've got to understand the lesson, teach the horse how to do it, then they will do it. In my opinion, the eyes of a horse are the windows to their brain. You can tell in a horse's eyes a lot about how they feel, how they're reacting to something. After hearing of Jan's success in training horses and his remarkable story, I decided to bring my quarter horse, Rain, a Premier and Foal, I recently rescued from slaughter at a horse auction. I wanted to know if she was trainable after all the trauma she had endured. Jan's passion for training horses is reflected in the progress of Rain and all the other horses that he takes in. I like to see the progress a horse is making. That to me is the bottom line. When I was at John Lyons training, I had two objectives every day. And the objectives were, number one, to make progress over the previous day, and number two, to have fun. When I'm on a horse and I'm working a horse, my objective is the same, to have fun with somebody else's horse and to make sure the horse is making progress. And once a scientist, always a scientist. Jan is meticulous in his methods and detailed in his record-keeping skills. He's giving to the bit a little. So that's fair now. Jan's work with horses has opened a new window in his life and is an example for all of us of how we can follow a dream, no matter how different or improbable it seems from our current life. There's nothing like in the evening, like when I'm at home, I have a round pin in my, out behind my barn, is I go out and put a bridle on a horse, put a saddle on a horse, and just ride the horse around. It's very relaxing. You come in the house, it completely just it raises everything in your mind. It's just a soothing effect. Being on the back of a horse is soothing and clears your mind because you cannot think about anything else. You know, whether it's horses, gardening, boating, find a passion and make time for it. It's one of the best balancing tools. For more information about your life redefined, log on to our website, rl.tv.